Yes, people, good afternoon. Are you surprised that Tottenham is winning? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Somehow, only God knows why is Tottenham winning this game. But there's plenty to be talking about. Straight after the game, we're going to do the match review. With me, I've got my special guest. It's usually a depressed Liverpool fan. My brother, how are you? Good. I mean, we got Arsenal tomorrow. Anyway. So. Sorry, um, 84 minutes, well, almost 85, free kick for uh, Brighton now. Yeah. Let's see if Brighton still can get I mean, a goal yeah. back and at least a draw. And we got it's Arsenal tomorrow, which I'm not confident for, but yeah. Um, Spurs, you tell all the Tottenham fans, how is Tottenham winning this listen, game? Spurs, if you get top four, I don't mind. If you go over United, I if don't mind. If Tottenham gets top four, I'm done with YouTube and I'm done no, with watching listen, football. I don't mind. No, I don't mind if Spurs get top four. If United, come on, top. they will not get top four. No. There's no way. Newcastle is beating Brighton for as well. No, come on, thing, this, no, United could come drop on, out, man. You know? This team cannot get top four. United will drop this out. This is the worst team. Do you know what? In 29 years of I've been watching football, I have never seen a boring team like Tottenham. I just don't know how they went into that. Well, I know. Luck. Luck. That's it. Can I just say, I want McAllister. Liverpool, can you please? We'll be I talking think. about him straight after the game. We'll be talking about him because according to some um, media from Argentina, he's been a lot of talks between Max Allison's dad and uh, Liverpool. Oh, I... What's a play in a way? You know what? I, I, I just heard that. Liverpool, United, Man City, Arsenal, Chelsea, one of those three teams. Those teams, I, I don't know. I'll take McAllister considering. Also, we're going to be looking at three o'clock kickoff, and uh, Man United beat Everton already today two 0 the, the shock is born with the being. And we're going to do the way. previous for Liverpool Arsenal tomorrow. You guys know that Liverpool is going to beat. No, don't. You're gonna, you're gonna get clipped. You're gonna get clipped when we lose. Just don't. Is that another it. penalty? No. Is that not a penalty for Brighton? No, that's right. Not let's see the highlights now. Let's not go too far. Let's not go too far. No, that's oh, not wait. Good. Come on, free kick. Let's see no. if the VAR's gonna check now. That's not, that's not a penalty. Let's. That's How, not good. man? Did you see the one on Hosenberg on Mituma? How is yeah, that, that not was, a penalty? No, no, this man. one. This one now. Um, well, no. he's grabbing him. Lengley is grabbing. How are Spurs winning, by the way? Yeah, but Lengley is grabbing dunk, right? No. You cannot just go in, inside a box. Doesn't matter. You cannot no. just like grab a player no. like that. But like, it didn't. Okay. No, it's one of those ones where it's just. Yeah, but the thing is, right? Why does the VAR? The VAR was good to disallow Brighton to. Two goals, right? Yeah, handball. But at Welbeck, right? How can Welbeck stop that? Right? How? How did Welbeck could stop that? And now, why did the VAR, yeah, why did the VAR not check Hosenberg when he kicked Mitchum inside the box? Clearly, that was a penalty. Why did VAR did not go involved? The VAR was good enough to check two handballs for Brighton, two disallowed goals. Why did the VAR not go involved when we clearly, we all saw that should have been a penalty for Brighton. You know, just we don't get why does VAR only works for you know for one and not other? Why? Why? I, I just don't, don't get. This is why VAR is fucking destroying uh, no. destroying football. But call me mad, right? I would rather I would I, I would rather not get any Europe than Europe. I would lose happily. I'd lose our last. I'd lose I don't know. The, things, the way things are going with Liverpool and Chelsea, man, and this Tottenham. How you know is this Europe? Tottenham Please, still Liverpool. in a top four race? You know I what? Mean, I just football I is making mind. me sick. I don't now. mind if we lose to Arsenal. Like if like I'll be. You mad. will beat Arsenal tomorrow. I'm telling you, you will beat Arsenal tomorrow. I don't want to join. I don't want to do Conference League. I don't want to be in Conference League. That horrible league. I don't know what the fuck the refs doing. Right, all the Tottenham players are just wasting time grabbing like each other all the time. And like, I swear to God, man, referees in the Premier League has been the worst this season, and the VAR as well. Newcastle winning so by the way, four minutes at a time. If Newcastle can win, yeah. can Ball Newcastle? Up. Let's see Wolves. How are Wolves Chelsea going? Actually, I said Wolves beat Chelsea one 0 I thought this Lampard era 
They're not being with Madrid. With Lampard, right? I just it does not make sense bringing Lampard back, no. right? That's, that's the honest, guy, yeah. right? He just got worse from this the first time he was at Chelsea. No. It's not that he got better, he just got worse. No. He's so poor no, tactics. Just he honest. just got worse. And Chelsea goes and give him another chance. Chelsea to come will not beat Madrid. I can I, say that now. Chelsea Madrid's will gonna destroy them. Like Vinicius and Benzema. There's not gonna be Messi for Chelsea. Bye, Chelsea. Just call it over. The leg might be over now. Chelsea are finished. Come on, uh, Brighton. One more chance. Brighton, please. Everyone wants you to win here. Everyone, right? I'm sure everyone, right? Yeah, Newcastle's still 2-1, so... You know, at this point, I don't, I don't care about my team for top four right now. Like, my team is in the gutter. I'm just focused on Brighton now, really. Teams like them. I'm hoping Brian gets top four. I don't think they will, though, now. Oh, Brighton in here with a chance. Stupnian crossing the box. Game's over, man. Ali Mars inside the box. Have a shot, you twat. The game's over, man. Ooh, <sighs> that Eric Dyer clearly out. Stupnian. Guys, what cross, cross? Leg, leg, clearly out again. Solid Mars inside the box. Header. Damn, West Ham have won, guys. How no. is Tottenham winning this game? Somehow, right, West, Ham, West Ham have beaten Fulham. That's a massive win. Do you know what? Six minute extra time, right? Six minute extra time. This second half should have been at least eight minute extra time. Nah. Um, debatable, but then, then again. Man, honestly, I just do not get yeah, how is Tottenham I winning this game? Problem, how is Tottenham still in the in the race to top four? Man, football is fucked up. I'm telling you. Because Liverpool and Chelsea are that's why. The only reason they're here is because Chelsea. Well, for, do you know what? There's a free kick for Tottenham now, right? They almost have what waste what minute and a half to take a fucking free kick. Spurs are the most luckiest club. And I'm telling you, once the clock hits 96 minutes, the fucking ref's going to blow the whistle. You're you really going to blow it earlier. That's how annoying they are. Come on, man, Brighton. Come on. Everyone wants you to win here, guys, in the chat. Come on. What a fucking job. It's done. Honestly, Wolves, just do not get it. Wolves are beaten. Chelsea, it's done. That game's done. Is, is it full time now? Yeah, Newcastle, Brentford as well. As, uh, yeah, uh, Villa just scored a second goal as well. Nottingham Forest in big trouble. Leicester is in a massive trouble. Man, Premier League man, is Madison, man, Madison is, uh, he is not, he needs a club. And you know what? Apparently we're, we're linked with Madison. I would take Madison. I honestly would. And Spurs also is linked with Madison as well. Like, I would take Madison to be honest. He's a... Right, Solimars in here. Come on, Brighton. Uh, it's hard, you know. Madison or McAllister, I do not know who to pick. It's right, me too, man. The game, man. Just call it over now, man. This game's dead now, man. Brighton. McAllister, man. Another header. McAllister, come on. Mitoma. Ferguson. What a player, by the way. Ferguson is. What minute are you, by the way? Ah, uh, I'm on a, a, a why am I getting crashed at the moment you say that? Hurry I'm up. I'm on ninety-two thirty-five seconds. I'm Solly Mars. My clock just shows nineties. No, penalty! 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 Come on! Penalty! No, 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 that's not that's not. That's not Surely that's a penalty. Yeah, no, that's not that's not. Alright, hold on. See the highlights. Nah, that would have been outside the box in a way. Hmm, ice close. Oh, I totally want a free kick, man. Ah, oh, it's annoying. Honestly, Spurs are so lucky on this time. <laughs> I swear, Spurs. I just do not get, honestly, I just do not get how Tottenham still. In that the only reason, right. no, the only reason why they're they're seeing their seasons all right is because Liverpool and Betty Chelsea. Is that our free kick for Brighton. Nah, 
Um, and my FPR flopped as well. My God, what a terrible weekend, honestly. Oh God, bright on yeah, Honestly, I just do not get. I just find it funny. I just find it very, very funny. Watch them. No, top was a trophy disperse. That, that's simple. Top was like a ready trophy disperse, isn't it? And they're gonna celebrate that one a trophy, aren't they? Because their their fan base just has low expectations. Right, last chance for Brighton in here. You're into Brighton. Two, well, free kick for Tottenham. Well, obviously, you know the ref would have to give free kick for Tottenham. Fuck off. But they don't give it to what, Brighton. What they don't give it to bullshit, Brighton. Bullshit, man. Just Brighton, man. You deserve an equaliser. You've been so good today. That's it. I just don't think Brighton will probably have another chance now. Thank you. So, oh, Brighton are still under this pressure. Oh, Romero clears it again. Come on, Brighton, man. <laughs> oh, Harry Kane's won the ball. Harry Kane. Good tackle. Come on, stick him on. Yeah, the game should be over now. Hoiberg. Honestly. You know another player I, uh, we should go for is Casado. I like yeah, he's a quality player. Brian has so many, but he just renewed his contract with Brighton. It doesn't mean anything. Up. Still can't leave. We're gonna, but they're gonna ask for a big fee. Big if, if Jew's gonna cost hundred and thirty at the price, that Casado's gonna cost. That's full time, by the way. Over. Well, you ahead of me in one minute. Yeah. It's over. It's still got about 35 seconds to go. Spurs have jammily, jammy, scraped wins. I do not know how, but honestly, I'm done with Spurs. I, I swear, if they get top four I, over United, I'll be happy. Yeah, United. it's over now. Brian got robbed. Job, yes, Brian people, full robbed, time. Man. Leave your fuzz in the live chat. Keep smashing the likes. Bring the likes up. Let me know your fuzz about this game. If you have watched, there's not much to talk about really, apart from you know, Brighton dominated the game. The ref clearly gave um, Tottenham a hand today massively, and we, we we're going to be talking about that. But my man, this is football for you, right? Football is so unfair. Sometimes and today was was the case. How did Brighton not win this game? How is Tottenham still in a race to get into that top four? I just do not get. It. Like I said, this makes me sick. When I when I watch this kind of games, like to, watching Tottenham, right? Pretty much the whole season. As a football fan, makes me sick seeing Tottenham being dominated today. How did they won today? Not a bad decision by the ref as well. I just it, ju it just does not make sense why the ref, why the VAR gets involved. Yeah, you know, Brighton two does a lot of goals, and we clearly saw a clear penalty for Brighton yeah. all day long. That would be a penalty in any league in any football game, and the VAR did not go involved. Why? I mean, man, what did you make of this Brighton performance? Let's not forget this Brighton. Plays very good football, right? Brighton. With our big name, they show again how good they are as a team. Brighton, Brighton are very good. They just got unlucky. They robbed, like I did time podcast, a robbery of Brighton. Yes, I agree. Um, I just cannot believe them, man. Honestly, Brighton. I'm in shock. And like you should Brighton. see, I don't know if you watched the penalty, Hosenberg on Mituma. Man, that should be a penalty in any and, league and in, in any football game in the world, right? Even and, in a friendly match, right? Between even me playing with my friends in a park, that was a penalty. All and Brighton, right? I just do not get. Like Brighton, yeah, they have so many good players. By the way, I just want to say, I want or oh, I want McAllister. I want Casado. I want obviously when we get Drew Bellingham. I think we're gonna. I think we, we're gonna get McAllister. I think we may just. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of reports coming out that we want McAllister. Um, I don't know if they're true, but I'm hoping they're true because what a player McAllister is, by the way, he is an absolute baller. Casado just renewed his contract, might just not be able to get him. He's going to ask. He's, they're going to ask too much. 
he's probably going to cost the same amount on Jude, probably, for Sado, because... I would think Kaiseido would, cro- uh, w- would cost um, less than Bellingham, because when you look, you know, probably with 80 million, 85 million, you probably get Kaiseido. Because I think the thing is, right, Brighton are so good negotiating, they're so annoying to negotiate with, because they also like big price. Big Guys, up. make sure you bring the likes up, please. Really appreciate the love but, and yeah. support. Let me just comment on the game before the comment on the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, Brighton, unlucky, Robert, they've been robbed. Um, Spurs somehow in this top four race. Luckily win. Lucky wins they've all they got. And Spurs, if Brighton were a bit more clinical and they were more, they didn't make any mistakes, they would have won this game. But VAR, again, Showing why it's so bad for the game. They need to get rid of it. But then the thing with VAR, yeah, all right. If they get rid of it, it could go against them. But then again, it could work. So, yeah. Brian deserved the win. But even the stats are actually right for once. The stats Yeah, are- look, look look, at the stats. You know, I'm not a fan of, like, stats. I absolutely hate when people comes up to me with stats. But, like, I, I've watched the game, right? You know, and uh, I just... Yeah, I, I am pissed off because as a neutral fan, right? Look, I, I don't support Tottenham. I don't give a fuck about Brighton. I'm just a football fan, right? But look, when you watch Brighton today, clearly Brighton dominated the game from minute one until the end, right? Seeing the way Brighton played again, a team plays a very good football. But seeing the, the decisions from the ref and the VAR again, it makes me sick. As a, as a neutral fan, it makes me absolutely fucking sick. I've been watching football for so long, right? And this season, Premier League is making me sick this season. Seeing teams like Tottenham, Chelsea and Liverpool this season. I know you support Liverpool, but you have to be real in here. Liverpool has been absolute shock in this season. And... When you when you watch this Tottenham, as you just mentioned, how is Tottenham still in a race to finish top four? I just do not get, right? I just do not get how is Tottenham still up there. We've said a few times, right? Just because everyone else has been so bad. And that is the reality. Everyone just been bad. Look at Chelsea, lost again today, by the way. We will be talking about that. But, I mean, look, watching the game today again. Yeah, it, it, you know what? It makes me lose for words because... I was excited. I was excited to see Brighton to win. I was excited to talk about this Brighton, right? As I've mentioned, right? When you look at this Brighton, with our big names, right? With our... Because you look at this Brighton squad right now, you're telling me a big star, a big name. No one, right? That. But the way Brighton plays football, the way they press, the way they know how to play with the ball and the way they know how to play with the ball, and I'm telling you right now, right, they are one of the most attractive teams to watch in the Premier League. And they probably have been, in terms of style of football, in terms of football, I think they probably have been up there with Arsenal this season. And no one will tell me opposite. Brighton and Arsenal has been, in terms of style of football, has been the two best teams in the Premier League this season. I mean, and if people tell me about City, this this City with Haaland is not as good as we've been we, we've seen in the last few years, right? With Alvarez, uh, is it different? New, Newcastle up there. New, I would I would probably take that as well. Newcastle have been ups and downs as well, but overall, Brighton and Arsenal oh, yeah. has Brilliant. been the two best teams in the Premier League in and, terms of style of football. And the fact, and the best thing is they kept hold of Casado in January and that was a key decision. Casado stayed because they did well, Brian. They did well. They annoyed Arsenal to the limit. They, had, they couldn't buy him. And now, Brian, they have the players, but it depends if they can keep him now. Do I think they're going to keep all of them? No. I think they might lose McAllister. I could see him losing McAllister. That's it. I, I think they're going to hold most of them. They're only going to lose McAllister. I think as McAllister might leave this summer. He, I think he will. But if they can keep on at least three or four, they've kept, they've done well. And I think they can challenge again next season if they can keep hold of their, especially even Ferguson. Like what you said, so much potential. He's only eighteen as well. Brilliant. Yeah, player. someone is actually mentioning about him in a live chat, and um, I mean. <sighs> What a player. What yeah, a player. I think he should have played today, but um 
But let me just quickly bring the stats up, and then I'm, I'm just gonna quickly bring the key moments of the game, so then we can move on. We can look. But, um, by the way, um, um, uh, Adam asked for the link. Adam podcast. He wants the link. By the way. Did he ask for the link? Yeah, yeah. Can I get the link? Of course, my boy. I'm going to send the link right now. My man, just give me a second. I'm going to send the link to you right now. And, um, right, just quickly, one. Just bear with me, my people. Really appreciate all the love <laughs> and support in the live chat. Make sure you bring the likes up. And um, I will go through everyone in the live chat. Don't worry. Keep bringing, keep, keep them comments bringing up, right? Uh, the link but, is in there, my man. I can podcast. Don't be like that Spurs fan who said, can I ask the link? And then he just went. <laughs> nah, <laughs> he like... will. He will come along. He yeah, will. I'm sure I he know. will. He's always watched my streams in a way. But look, people, let's do the um, review quickly. Then we can move into a few teams that is in big trouble. We're going to be talking about Shet Lampard again. And yeah, he's going to come along in a minute. But look, just quickly, 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 people. Let's go through some moments of the game. I'm just waiting for him to come along. While he's coming, let me just quickly go into Rukugi. Hello to you. Big up to you. Really appreciate the love and support. Got my man in here. GPT. I'm sorry, my brother. I don't know your name, but how are yeah, you? That's fine. That's spot on. Yeah, yeah, no. It's, you got to spot on. I'm, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> um, I am... Man. Oh, I'm lucky I had three games going on at the same time in my house because the Chelsea one was just difficult to watch. Um, so cool. But I, then I had the Spurs game on, and that didn't make me feel better because, wow. I, Ferreira, so you're, you're a Barca fan, right? Yeah. This is my memories of our Champions League game. You know which one I'm talking about. It was it was in the yes, it was game winning goal with all the non penalties, all the yeah that Chelsea yeah, you should know have had one? at least three penalties on that game, yeah. The 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 drug bar, it's a disgrace. It's a, that <laughs> game, that game. It, it felt I I felt that for Brighton today. Wow, what? I, look, okay, Spurs won the match, three points to them. They're they're still in this in this top four race, but wow, we're did they pull the heist of the year? That was horrible refereeing. I cannot believe they managed to pull out with a win in a in a game where, you, as you were mentioning, you hate going over the stats because they don't tell the full story. And Brighton should have left comfortably with a with a two one at least three one victory. Maybe the first disallowed goal was was uh, justified. But I, I'm not convinced Matoma's goal was a handball. That looked like it hit him right in the shoulder, pectoral mm -hmm. area. It and was a handball. Yet, was it really? I, it looked so close from when I saw it. Even on the replay, yeah, it didn't but look then, like a handball. Look, um, GPT, I have to agree with you. I think the first one, yeah. You understand why the VAD is allowed? It's actually... But, Right. He used his hand. The way Welbeck controlled the ball, the way the ball goes from his body mm -hmm. to his hand, right? You have to right. think that his the ball goes basically on to his body, slight on his body to his hand. That second goal should never be disallowed. I just want to know, second goal. I think I agree. Show me the first goal. I think because it, it, he can use his hand for support. He uses his hand to like support him with that. That's where mm. I could understand where. It was disallowed. Second goal was a disgrace, though. By the way, that that, that should have been a goal. But yeah, mm -hmm. Brian got robbed today. But yeah, but the reason On a penalty. I just want to say, right? You're a Chelsea fan, right? I'm assuming. Yep. Yeah. The only reason why Tottenham are fourth, the Czech, because of us both clubs are rubbish. Both of our clubs have not been great. And that's and that's the story of Spurs. That is just like last year, Spurs shouldn't have been in the Champions League. Like in in how they finished above Arsenal. Arsenal let that slip. They oh, do yeah. enough just right. to be good enough to be the last team to to qualify. That's yeah. how they do. It. And like respect that you know they have some talent there. Like I know I know it's gonna sound like I'm I'm hating and upset because of how bad Chelsea were today. But I I just can't justify Spurs being in the top four this year. Like yeah. it it should be Newcastle, Man U, 
in uh, Arsenal City. But you can throw in Brighton. They should be in the discussion. They should be closer to the top four spot than Spurs should be securing it. That's mm-hmm. what's upsetting. Yeah, it's just... Annoying. Yeah, I mean, spot on. I absolutely agree with you. And I, I'm sure your heads, like me and Dalev, I'll say in a few times that the reason um, Tottenham got top four last season was clearly because Arsenal bought it, and then Man United mm-hmm. was really bad. And then when you look at Tottenham this season, how boring they've been, how bad they've been. I've went through a few times, like Tottenham squads, how bad is Tottenham squad? But... How is Tottenham still into, into that top four race? Look, only God knows. But you as a Chelsea fan, I know, of course, you don't like Tottenham. But can you see Tottenham finish top four again with luck, like, getting that top four like last season? Can you can you see they finish top four? If They'll make top four, but not by their merit. And that means that they won't get it solely on, on them being the better team. It's going to have to be stuff like this or a, a major decline of Newcastle, uh, Brighton somehow just strapping off completely after today. Uh, I'm trying to think of another team that, that are in, in that discussion. Liverpool were, uh, uh, were, but now I don't know if they're even going to win tomorrow. No, um, we're not. But, we're but, not but that's the thing. But you guys are incredible at Anfield. Incre- no, like besides, no, no. besides Leeds and Madrid, I don't think you guys have lost. Don't get your no. Listen, if you expect us to do a favor um, to any team, no, because we are rubbish. Somehow, Fabinho thinks we're going to win. Somehow, with our midfield of uh, Fabinho, looks like a thirty-year-old Thiago, who's just injured. Well, he's only good, and then you have Reddy Henderson who can't even do anything. So, like, you what you, the... we're not winning tomorrow. But I'm not have. We're not going to win tomorrow, sadly, but I hope so. But the good thing is, Anfield, we usually turn up Anfield, but, like, I don't see it, sadly. But I hope we turn up. I really hope we do, man. You know, when I said the same thing versus when you guys were going to go against Manchester United, because I said maybe the only team that can do what Madrid did, other than Madrid, is Manchester United and Arsenal. I would say I'm putting Arsenal above United. Versus Madrid, right? I'll be honest, right? We did turn up. It's just that one goal I feel like killed us. That Vinicius, what a goal, by the way. That goal just killed us. It just like ruined our confidence. But we were actually good in the first 20 minutes. We played well. We got, but then that Vinny goal went in and then it's just killed from then. So even for a 2 1 up a half time, I think it would have been a different game. But Alison made that mistake and that just created, I think it ruined it. But Honestly, we're not winning tomorrow, sadly. But you never know. I, I don't know what Liverpool Yeah, is. I mean, look, we've said this a few times and um, the gap is just getting too big yeah. now for Liverpool to finish top four. Like, yeah. And because Liverpool has been so inconstant this season, I just, yeah. unfortunately, I cannot see myself like seeing Liverpool going in a good like, run until the 13, end of the season. Okay, with 13 points behind, fourth of the game in hand, 10 points would be if we won our game in under 10 points. That's considering United drop off, Villa drop off. By the way, Villa are firing right now. Villa. And I cannot mm-hmm. see Liverpool going in a good run. Not this season. They just have been too yeah. inconsistent. In I just season. need like a bloody. We need you, Belling. We need. We need McAllister. By the way, McAllister. I just want to discuss McAllister. We will right? be talking about Mike, um, Allison because, like I said. According to some Argentinian media that I was reading this morning, he's been a lot of talks between, you know, his dad are they and reliable? Are they reliable, by the way? Are they good journalists? Yes, they are. They are. They are. are I, love him more. I would love McAllister. Imagine we get McAllister, dudes, and Betty, maybe one more, and that will just cook. We're going to cook next season if we get them to. Yeah. I- no, let me just quickly, I will share the screen for us and everyone in the live chat, everyone is watching. Don't forget to keep the likes up, please. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. I really appreciate the love and support. Just to go through the key moments, basically we've talked about, you know, too many bad decisions. But just so everyone else can see, because a lot of people, especially people in the UK, that don't really have the chance to watch a three o'clock games because, you know, Sky Sport, you know, their main TV channels do not show the three o'clock I, I'm, I'm a lucky man to know be English and I'm foreign and I'm proud and I always get to see all the football. But look, just let's quickly share the screen. Let's go through the key moments, right? Let's talk about what a goal going on at the moment, right? What a goal. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but obviously 
we had an, another Asian player in the Premier League before, played for Manchester United, Jung Jung Park, what a footballer, Ooh. by the way. What a... And then mm. Son now, right? Oh. Son is having, you know, a very bad season, let's oh, awful. say. Awful, awful. His uh, off is bad. Like, his, can... Some of his strikes is unreal. Look, I, f- I would I would say with Boy Fitch left and right, he's probably one of the best, if not the best, in the top five leagues in a row. When this guy's on form, with Boy Fitch, there's not ones out there that strikes with Boy Fitch better than Son. Like I'm Son, not sure if you guys would agree with me, right. but what a finish. Like, by the way, what I mean, Son's been poor this season, I don't know. But he's had moments, I'll be honest. But, but I feel like Son, his season, I don't, I don't, how do he, I don't, I don't think he's finished, but you're not going to get big money for him this summer. You're not going to get big money anymore. So, honestly, right, if I was Spurs, I would sell him. Because, I'll do a whole reboot. Sell Son and Kane, then do a whole like reboot. Because you may as well restart. Spurs need a restart. That's the problem. They need to restart from the beginning. Sell the best two, get better players in. But when you have Levy, I'm not sure if you're going to do that. Like, I'm not sure if they're going to sell Son. They're probably not. They're not going to sell Kane. Kane, I think, could stay. Because I think Levy will just keep him. Levy will just be annoying. He will not give any offers to Kane. So... Son, quality player, but he, I don't think you're going to big money for him anymore because his season's been awful. Three goals, is it four goals? No, no, that's poor from a golden boot winner. So, yeah, it's just disappointing, man. Son, he's had moments, but not good enough for me to die. Yeah. Get- um, JP Chia, what would you make of Son, right? I mean, clearly this is not the best season, probably the worst season since he'd be at Spurs. And not just in terms of stats, but also in terms of performance, he hasn't been a great son. But when you look at his goal today again, and his left foot, his right foot, surely son son going to have to be up there, like probably the best in the top five leagues with Boy Fitch when it comes to strike a ball. Yeah. I'm not sure if you can yeah. hear us. Uh, yeah, like no, you're yeah, I'm absolutely spot on with that. When he's on his day, this man cannot be touched. That he is yeah. just, but you, that's the issue with him. You just never know when that's gonna come, when that's gonna happen. It is, it's almost, is it worth the risk to keep onto him, um, in hopes that he's gonna get back onto his stride? I, I'm trying to remember how his his uh, how was his performance last year. Was it good or was oh, it? He was quality well? last year, man. Like he, right. He was quality, man. What a player last year. I mean, he was. He should actually won the Golden Boot, to be honest, if, because Salah dropped off massively after the AFCON. Um, but yeah, yeah it, he, he was quality last year. And I don't know what's happened to him. Like, I don't know. Maybe. I don't want to say he's finished, but maybe he is at like left wing. Maybe you need to move him to maybe any position because I don't don't know if he fits left wing anymore. The way he plays but maybe it's just Spurs you know, as a whole. He no one's been great this season. No one's coming been like, great. Coming like as a second striker maybe. Yeah I mean maybe they need to move on Son. I think Spurs if they want to get back to that trophy winning they may need to move Son on because you need you need a whole reward Spurs. You do need a big reward. And they, they flukily won today. Let's be honest. They, they didn't win very good performance. It was a fluky win. If VAL were actually smart, Brian should have got a point at least. So Spurs will get to I just think Spurs might just edge it. Not because they could. They're just lucky. They might just get top four, sadly. Yeah, I, I mean... I mean, still had them out of top four. It's a tough one with Tottenham, honestly. I don't think they will. I've said this before the season start. I've said, I basically said this every week, but I don't know. Just, do you know what? I had enough of talking about Tottenham. So, yeah, and here was there's a lot of yeah. goal. I did understand this one, but then we had a very good Brighton dominate. Brighton should have been winning, um, you know, a half time. You know, we saw Dunk with a good header. And yeah. when you saw Brighton equalise, you thought, you know, Brighton is dominate. Brighton is going to come in the second half. They did it. They dominate. They had a possession. They had the chances. They just could not score. And this has been one of the biggest problems for Brighton. We've saw Brighton on the Porta where they played brilliant football. 
but they just could not score enough goals. They, they have goals have now. They have goals now. This Evan Ferguson, he's a goal scorer. Not a machine, but he's a good... He will player. become. Yeah. 18. And a lot of clubs apparently want him, according to the English media, like Liverpool and United scouting him. I, I, don't, I, I don't think he will leave Brighton, but he's a quality player and he's only young. But they didn't need a striker, I'll be honest. I think Welbeck is not good enough. Um, somehow he still plays. I don't know how. Um, yeah, I think they need a striker this summer. They do. But it's hard. Like, I think I said this much. It's hard when like a Brian because there's no, like, the striker market is dead. And a lot of strikers with Champions League football, like, they, a lot of strikers is now football these days. So, yeah, I mean, it's hard for Brian to get a good striker in because there's no good strikers out there. Like, a good striker it's just hard to get a striker that's good it's these days man it is hard yeah i mean i don't think welbeck is that bad i think his work rate has been brilliant for brighton but obviously he's not going to guarantee you you know 15 or 20 goal a season but <clears throat> just a quickly one with my men in here like i was saying in the second half brighton dominated brighton was just unlucky but when you look at the um, there's a loud goal right let's just quickly Got into Welbeck, disallowed goal. Um, right, just quickly, quickly. We had both managers got sent off. Yeah. They was picking each other. You knew that was coming, by the way. You knew that was coming. And um, Harry Kane. Yeah, sorry. Let me just quickly mm. bring Brighton second disallowed goal. Nah, that's the one that nah, we were talking about. Like I said, yeah, Mituma, I did understand why it was disallowed, but yeah. when you look at his second goal, unfortunately, I'm sorry, nah, that is never that no, should what never can he do? Allowed. He's actually stuck in a position. What can he actually do? Exactly. Like, he could not do anything. But look, my man, here's what it is. Look, I just don't think it's much we can talk about because we can't change anything. That's the reality. But then let's go into a clear penalty where, honestly, I still do not get why, why, why had a look. Really. They didn't look properly, clearly. We actually looked at, they didn't look properly enough, clearly. Or did, did they want Spurs to win because it, it was a clear penalty? But Matoma, that was a, the Koiberg stuck on him. That's a penalty any day of the week, even in Sunday League football, I don't care. And any football. And how is this not a penalty? I'm just disgraced by it. And Brighton fans should be... They shouldn't be annoyed with their team. They should be annoyed with the VAR and referee today. Not their team. Because their team was brilliant. They done everything right. It's just the referees. Like, VAR... The VAR, right? If you want to move remove VAR out the game, it could go against them at, one, at some points because it can be good at one stage. But then it can be bad at one stage. It's so inconsistent. I think VAR is decent, but it's not good. Enough. When it does, when it does this, it really annoys you because the VAR is here to help the game. It's not helping the game at all. Like then it helps the game as well at the same time. It's just inconsistent, man. What can you do? Yeah, I mean, spot on. Like I'm sure Brighton fans will be proud of their team, the way they played today again. Like brilliant football, brilliant team to watch, and um, yeah, I mean, it's just hard to. To understand why did the VAR not got involved and give a penalty for that, but no, he's where he's football. He's just like it's a shame that VAR only works for some and doesn't work for others. Like my man in here, GPT mentioned about the VAR. Now he went back with you know Barcelona in that in that Champions League in that semi final. That we was lucky. Chelsea completely destroyed us at Dominate. We was lucky. Chelsea should have had at least three penalties. I can't remember right now who ha who should have been sent off as well. Abidal got sent off on that on. game. Who else should have been sent off? I mean, look, Abidal, but football yeah. is like this, right? You're going to have bad decisions, good decisions, but in the Premier League this season, we're talking about the biggest league in the world, but they've just been so bad. The VAR and the refs this season has been, all of a sudden, they've been shocking. It wasn't too bad last season, but when you look at this season, some of the decisions just been, wow. So, yeah, um, GPT, my man, just a quickly one. Your thoughts about VAR and the ref, please. I mean, expect someone to be fired from the whoever's on responsible for VAR today. That 
this is the thing. I mean, we we already seen um a few stackings uh, happen after what the Brighton, uh, not Brighton, uh, the Brentford versus Arsenal because the, the referee didn't uh, draw the lines for VAR or the VAR didn't draw the lines. It, I'm I would expect another one because you can't miss anything that clear. This was this was the whole point of having it, but it's still prone to human error. They invested so much money into VAR tech all over England that we're not, it's not going to go anytime soon. They've invested too much into this, but they need to have proper training for these for these uh, referees in charge because it. I have never been more disappointed and disgusted with with officiating this season, ever, ever. It's horrible. It's not helping. It's just making more frustration and more controversy because now you know we, we don't know like how can you explain that that clear that you're seeing in slow motion and then people will get. But here's the thing: even if they get rid of it. And the same human error um, decisions still come up. Is like, well, see, this is why we should have kept VAR because this can um, take it away or reduce this one decision that happened today or this one that's gonna that happened the week prior. It's it, you're not gonna win with this. It's it's here. We're gonna have to learn to adapt. I just hope that they get better training uh, for all officials for this because I think in in Italy they use VAR as well, but they do it better. I'm, I, yeah, if anyone watches Serie A uh, more than I do, so, um, but I, I hear that the training there is, is miles ahead of of whatever is going on in England. Yeah, true. I agree with you, my boy. Um, and then Kane scored a second goal. Kane had a very, very poor game. It wasn't Kane the best game. It could not create. Could not drop deep to. To create, he usually does that as Tottenham hasn't gone number 10. But um, yeah, it was a very poor game from Kane. That's what, but look, that's what Kane does, try. that's what top quality players do they score when they don't have the best games. And Kane needs to move away if he wants a Premier League legacy, he needs yeah. to go to United or somewhere like that. I hope he doesn't go United, by the way, but I think he probably will because it does seem like that. I'm looking at the big six, right? Chelsea. They do. I don't think he'll go to Chelsea, to be honest. No, that's... Yeah, we can. We can. We, I don't, I don't, we have Darwin Nunes. We have Salah. We have enough. Uh, who else? Uh, Tom, who else? You got... Um, I, mean, I only can you, see Kane going to... To United. United or yeah. Bayer. Yeah. Bayer. I would love to see him at Milan, but they had to, they would have to sell Leo. If we buy in, right? I don't think... Buy in... He doesn't move outside. I don't think he'll move outside England. I don't. I think he might just stay. Yeah, I think he wants to stay in England, and he wants a Premier League legacy. If you want a Premier League legacy, you need to win a league title or win some sort of trophy because he doesn't win any. At Spurs, he just won't win a trophy. It's simple well, as just... any club like you know Brian could win a trophy. You know, I'm not saying go Brian, but Brian have a chance of winning a trophy more than Tottenham. So. Yeah, it, it, I have because they're still in the AFA Cup semi final uh, against Man United. United, and, right? I think they can be United. I think they I can be they Manchester will. United. Yeah, they I don't can. think they will, but I think if they have they, a chance. If they can't take their chances, they will beat Man United because they do create chances. Yeah, um, especially with the United defense. Not They're still a bit shaky at the back, to be honest. And if you can target that, yeah, you know, you're not going to get destroyed. Not destroyed, but I think United might just get beat. But I think United will win that. But yeah. It'll be interesting to see now, Brighton. I don't know about Europe. I think they'll get Europe. I don't know which one though. It'll be tough which one though, to be honest. Mm. I know. I mean, um, just a quickly one, uh, GPT. I know you're a Chelsea fan. I, I know you haven't got much love for Tottenham or Harry Kane, but what do you make of Harry Kane? I mean, when you look what Harry Kane has done at Tottenham, right, and for England as well. Do you think it's time for to- for Kane to leave Tottenham? Should he go somewhere else, like a different country, different league, or should he stay in a Premier League for his legacy? And you know, maybe Manchester United, then he will be able to win trophies. That's the only piece that miss on Harry Kane because I think Harry Kane is a quality player. But do you think that? The best for Kane legacy is to move away from Tottenham. That's the thing. It depends if he just wants to be a legend in Tottenham, which at this point, already is. If yeah. you were, if, 
Yeah, it's, I think he wants to go out like that, then he win the trophy, because if not, he would have left a while ago. The only team right now, like as you mentioned, that would really go for him or like realistically get him is United. But I think they're going to focus more on Victor Osimhen, um if they're going to spend that type of money. Now, if he were to go abroad, fine, Bayern would be a good one. Um, I think he should go some somewhere in Italy. But if most likely, if depending on what what they need to spend to get him, I, I'm most likely he's just going to stay at Spurs and retire. I think uh, Real Madrid in his career there. Real Madrid potentially go for him, or like potentially Real Madrid. Because no. I know Benzema's, Benzema's, no. I know. I think they gave him more from Mbappe. I think at that point. Yeah, they're probably saving up for Mbappe. You know, look, I think Kane would be a good replace for Benzema, but I cannot see Kane going to Madrid next season. I think season. he's got like one year left on his contract with um next this summer. So if you can get him on a free, I mean I don't know. Because it, I think Napoli went 150 million for him, and I don't know who affords that. It's United. Why do you go to PSG? <laughs> PSG. Uh, why would you know that? Plastic, <laughs> plastic club. <laughs> then we're going to disrespect Ozzyman after five games if he doesn't score any. Because uh, because when you look at Benzema now, like the age, he just got better. Benzema is on his prime now. Look, like, it, Benzema, Benzema won't, he will probably stop soon, obviously, every player. Just the, he won't. This, it, it seems like he's not going to stop at the moment. Like he is such a good player, Benzema. So I don't think Madrid will get him. They're probably going to get him back. I, think, I can see him in Mbappe in a Madrid shirt very soon. Honestly, I can't see that. Honestly. Yeah, let's just quickly go in the live chat, and we're going to bring Chelsea. And he's not one's better than GPT to, to be talking about his Chelsea. They lost, and I actually predict someone in this morning asked me, "What do you think Chelsea today?" I said there's going to be a draw or one nil Wolves, one nil Wolves. But look, just a quickly one. Let me go through in the live chat because my brother wants a little bit of attention. My boy Rukugi says Halad is back. First half hat trick in common. Yeah, he's back. Is he? I haven't checked the lineup. Is well, I've got. I'm watching now, but is Julian Alvarez not playing? Or is just Halad? He's on the bench. Julian Alvarez in the bench, right? I don't like Guardiola anymore, by the way. And um, he says, you know, M. is doing a fantastic job. Don't forget that in they were in regulation zone when he got. Yeah, true facts. They they beat um, it was a two 0 at the end. Yeah, they beat Nottingham Forest two 0 today. I mean, uh, he said, can you do a quickly prediction on Chelsea next six games? I reckon six lows. We will do. We will talk about Chelsea a little bit. And uh, obviously Lampard, Chelsea next season. Because I do not agree with Lampard coming back. I think Lampard just got worse since the last time. You know, he was at Chelsea. He proved that uh, at Everton. Very poor tactic. I just do not get. But just me. Look. We all have different opinions, but let's just let's see. Um, United shouldn't pay big money to get Kane if they can get him for free when his contract expires. He's more than welcome. Um, yeah, I think he would be perfect. Perfect among United. Uh, that's what Manchester United missing at the minute. At number nine to be scoring their goals. We would right and spend money to get Osim and Victor. I mean. I don't know. I think Kane would be better for Manchester United. But yeah, also, Oshimene is a good striker. A legend for winning Z trophies. Other cup doesn't count. He's taking a piece of um, <laughs> Harry and Kane. But yeah, my man. Did he win one? <laughs> quickly won with your Chelsea. What is going on? What is going on? Tell me about uh, Chaos. Chaos is happening. It is. There, I've. So at first, I was watching the first half and I. I caught myself realizing this has to be one of the worst has I ever seen. Maybe it's up there with Arsenal uh, uh, when we played them earlier this year. But this, as, yes, Wolves at the moment you could be could be a, a tough game for for people. I know it's tough for Liverpool um, this season over there. But my God, we look like a relegation team. We looked so unorganized in the back. The midfield was dead. Why? I, mean, I get that they couldn't play Conte or they didn't want to uh, risk Conte. Um, instead, they put Gallagher, which, my goodness. And again, uh, apparently, we play, we're playing with a new formation of 4 3 0. Nothing up top. Nothing there. My, no one, even the substitutes, made not a single difference. Zero. 
and Kai might as well not have been there. Uh, Abba at least gave effort today. I'll say that he gave some type of like he gave a damn. Everyone else on the wings, Mudrick, Pulisic, Sterling, not one threat ever. It was shockingly bad. And then of course Kukurea asked us back today because we wanted we didn't want to risk Chilwell even though he had to come on. Kukurea could have at least put more pressure onto Cunha. I think yeah, Cunha that scored the goal and made made it a little bit more difficult. But instead, gave him plenty of space, to, gave his time. And I was like, it's coming. And what do you know? Arguably, uh, could be competing for goal of the season. Just and and all they and once that went down, they knew that Chelsea were not going to go and chase this equalizing goal because even if they tried, it would be a failure. And they and <laughs> I don't even know if we had like more than like one or two shots at goal. Like it, it, it was that bad. I don't and everyone who was happy about the Lampard uh, signing as interim manager. Oh, this is proper Chelsea. Oh, we got Mason Mount's gonna come back. Just you wait. This is the same manager that almost brought Everton down to relegation. Yeah. Now he's gonna be the manager to bring us further into relegation. I was worried that like we might see Chelsea in a relegation battle with Potter. People were telling look at me, that's crazy. You're being dramatic. You're being drastic. Now I'm wondering as as um the person in the ch- in the panel mentioned, uh, when, what do you see your next six games? I don't know. It's I, it'll be hard to picture a win. I'm looking at when, where can we pull out a draw. And it, it's going to be very difficult to predict that because we have Arsenal coming up, we have Madrid, two both legs coming up. I'm trying to think who else we're playing um for the rest of the month, but nothing. Those are the yeah, ones that are coming to mind. Look, um... We will look on that Chelsea next few games because they got Champions League in midweek against Real Madrid. But I mean, I have to agree with you. I mean, you you have to be sick to enjoy this Chelsea. Like you, you have to be sick to enjoy Chelsea this season, Liverpool this season, and Tottenham this season. These three clubs this season has been absolutely shocking. Look, Chelsea. The way Chelsea has been playing this season, they should have been even worse where they are now in the table. Liverpool too. And Tottenham somehow, only God knows how is Tottenham still up there, you know, in a top four race. But when you look Lampard, right? Man, I have never been a fan of Lampard as a manager. Don't get me wrong, as a footballer, Lampard was absolutely brilliant. Right. He, right? He, he was amazing. Chelsea. Sorry, my man. No, I'm just saying, like, no, I'm, I agree. Like, he was amazing. He was amazing as a player. But go, yeah, go ahead. I mean, interrupt. Yeah, I was saying, like, yeah, look, Lampard as a footballer was absolutely brilliant. A legend for Chelsea. Probably the best midfielder in Chelsea history. And um, one of the best English footballers of all time. But... As a manager, look, if Dunn at Derby, at Everton at Chelsea, Fars and stuff, it just does not make sense. And the funny thing is that Lampard have only got worse since the first time he was at Chelsea. And um, clearly, he's only going to be Chelsea manager until the end of the season. But why Chelsea not bringing in whoever they want to bring in in the summer? Why they don't bring it in now? Start preparing next season. So that would give... The, the new manager, time, right? Time. And then you will have the whole summer as well preparing for next season. It just does not make sense, my brother. And not only that, now we're also risking playing the waiting game. We have to remember, too, Spurs are looking for a manager. PSG are looking after um, a manager after, what's his name? Galtier? Galtier? Mm-hmm. These are names we... You know, Nagelsmann, I'm sure he will be, you know, happy to take role at um at Spurs or PSG or, or Enrique. Now we have to hope that these two don't get snagged up by either team. And then we have to hope that if we, okay, what do we look for Jose? We have to hope that Jose decides he wants to leave Italy, which country 
that he loves. It's like his second home. And now people right. are bringing up, what are we bringing back Ed Chalabi? Sure. But if he doesn't take the Brazil job, which he will be pretty crazy to deny, because imagine Ancelotti with the Brazilians that he's had at Madrid recently. It's going to be like he's, he's going to have his own Madrid squad. It's, And now we might have to be stuck with a name like, uh, who, what was his name? Uh, Lampard. Or it, and, and it might just just sound to a permanent deal because it's proper Chelsea. It's proper Chelsea. And I hate that. He's not the right manager. People are talking about vibes. I don't want vibes. I want results. I want wins. I want some type of progress. We went backwards. We didn't just decline. We plummeted today. It's it was I'm I'm looking at this, this is embarrassing. Like I'm just like I'm gonna watch baseball for the first time in like twenty years. And I'm thirty. So this is this was sad today, but you know, it's it's football. You're with Chelsea new manager, right? As a Chelsea fan, who would you with some of the names that you've mentioned, Negelisman, Luis Enrique, maybe Zidane, with Ancelotti, like you just said, I just think, you know, he's not silly and I'm sure he will take the Brazil job. Looks that way. But who would you take? Right now, who would you take at Chelsea? Like, free to choose or realistically, like, uh, out of everyone, what do I see? Like, what you see is up there, free at the minute. But we're not on mm-hmm. you will be taking a Brazil job. But let's say mm-hmm. Luis Enrique, who already said that he would love to come to the Premier League. Neglisman, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a fan of his style of football. Zidane wants to come back, you know, after being, you know, having a break. And who would you take? I would need someone that has that authority in the locker room, who knows man management. I would that would that for me that that just screams more Ancelotti, but like you said, Brazil is most likely where he's going to go to. So, I out of everyone, I wouldn't mind taking Enrique. The one thing is that we do the players that we have now with his the playing style that he wants to implement on on his preferred like uh, ideal team and um yeah, that's and also true. a big I factor you know, and a big factor is gonna be uh, who are we gonna get rid of this summer because we need a giant clear out we have way too many players i'm i'm already looking at mount is, is the name that most likely is going to be gone harris is the name that might be gone um ziach gone ruben off the sheik might be gone Aspilicueta needs to go. Thank you for your time. He is a, a club legend at this point. He's won everything. He has to go. Mendy has to go. And uh, it's, it's it's a lot of players we need to get rid of. We have about two squads right now. Yeah, this is what I was mentioning the other day. One of the biggest problems with Chelsea is, is not who's coming in. He's like... You got a big squad, right? And you also got so many players on loan that I think Chelsea are really gonna struggle for the next two seasons. If things do not go well, I mean, like you said, like I think out of there, when you look Zidane, Luis Enrique, Neglisman and stuff, I would take Luis Enrique, but he just mentioned he's the players that you go will he suit his style of football now, but as a club. Yeah, Luis Enrique would sue at Chelsea, but then Chelsea has to go big again in the summer. But can you see Chelsea spending again like 500, 600 million and get rid of a lot of players? I don't think that's going to be possible. Like Chelsea, honestly, Chelsea's in a big in a big mess. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's about now the whole balance of books. We need to sell a lot. But we're gonna have to come to the to the accepting the fact that with the players that we have right now, we might be stuck with them for like the next couple of years until we can break free of any type of FFP limitation we have on the spending. Because I would love to go for a player like Osman. I don't know if we can do that without breaking FFP. It's, it's gonna be too much to ask for. It's, it's so we have to rely for, first and foremost to get rid of some players to get some money in. Like I said, Mount can go for 50 to 60. I'm sure there's going to be teams 
like Liverpool, who do need midfield help. Um, let's see, Ruben, can, I think he was in talks with Newcastle. I guess he would be someone that, I, okay, maybe for 20 mil, they can splash for. I mean, they have the money. But, yeah, it's just it's just going to be we have to slowly chip this away and see what, if they can come financially okay on the other side. Because right now I think they said that they were in 120 or 150 million in debt or I think um, in the in the red. Yeah, I mean, it's just is is a big situation. Honestly, Chelsea. I don't know, he's in a big mess. Um, I've got Sebastian Lopez in here. Big up to you, my brother. He says, best league in the world, can't let this robbery happen. Exactly what I said, my man. I just do not care. Yeah, best league in the world, I mean, by far. But this season, in terms of refs and VAR, has been the worst in the top five leagues. And I've got my man in here says, bring La Caca back. And he says, don't understand what Chelsea fans want Mendy gone. He won best goalkeeper of the year on the two hole. Yeah, he was, and um, he's not a bad goalkeeper. But I think Chelsea should get better. It's the same with Kepa as well. I just don't think Kepa is that goalkeeper that you can see. You know, Chelsea rebuilding a team and having this kind of goalkeepers. That's just me. I'm not sure about you, GPT, as a Chelsea fan. Well, uh, they, it's about like um, the goalkeeper situation. Yeah. So With the answer Kevin to this question. Mindy. Oh, um, hmm. so the answer to this question, I, I'm guessing he's a Man United fan. I think um, he's a Man United fan. Yeah. So, so I would ask, okay, so if you're justifying this for him, would you take him as a replacement for De Gea? My guess would be for him is going to be no. Now, how many times did Kepa play, uh, get the ball today? How many times was the ball played to him? Quite a bit. I think he might have had one of the more more touches in today's game, in all of his um, all of this season. Mendy cannot play with his feet. He has horrible distribution. He panics. In today's game, uh, the goalkeepers need to be almost. I don't know what the what the ambidextrous. Or not. I think that's what spot on. Exactly what I was thinking, and this is what I said the other day about Marco and Reiter Stegen. He's mm -hmm. so good that, you know, he's so good with his feet. And in today's football, you know, it's key if a goalkeeper can play with his feet. So spawn in there, my man. So my thing is that, yeah, it's like having a, a um an 11th field player instead of a, a, a 10 and a goalkeeper. That's the thing. It's changed. That's why you look at Ederson, one, one of the best goalkeepers in the league. Same with Allison. If you need this type of goalkeepers, um, and if and I always said, if you just took Mendy's reactions, how he is on the ball, <clears throat> and gave that to Keppa, he'd be a perfect goalkeeper, or it may in his height too, because I mean, like Keppa, I think is relatively short for a goalkeeper, but other than that, it, it's just uh, Mendy's got the reactions, Keppa's got the got the footwork with the or the foot distribution. But they're, they're both incomplete. This one is costing a lot more than the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. And also, I have to agree with this comment in here. I think that is a spot on. Goalkeeper, like basically, a goalkeeper situation at Chelsea de Mena is the less concern because when you look at it, I don't think Mendy and Kepa, they are really bad keepers. Like, they're the worst. They can do the job sometimes, but like I said, in terms of uh, in when Chelsea is looking to rebuild in two, three years' time, Chelsea, for me, as a neutral fan, I think Chelsea should be looking for a better goalkeeper, right? I'm not sure if you agree with that, JP Tia. Like I, like I said, I do agree with this comment, but then in terms of like Chelsea's gone through a rebuild, in the next two, three years, I'm sure Chelsea wants to be up there to compete to win the Premier League, Champions League, with all the money they're spending. I still think Chelsea should be looking for another goalkeeper. I mean, I never said that the goalkeeper position was your biggest concern, but it's like, why would you have both of them on the payroll? It doesn't make any sense to have both yeah. of these goalkeepers taking wages. 
if anything, just uh, yeah, if you had to get rid of one, my choice would be Mendy. And mm-hmm. also, if we can get rid of both, fine, because Kepa is, I think his contract is very hefty. So you need a, it would be ideal to get some someone that, yeah. Um, of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna state the obvious, but uh, tall goalkeeper who can use his foot, like his feet, um, great reflexes. But I, I don't know who's available for anything less than 50. I know that they're looking at um, Sanchez uh, and Raya uh, to to come in. It looks like the Brighton goalkeeper, too. I think, yeah, that's Sanchez. He's looking out of favor with the manager, be, um, being that now he's the number two. Uh, and as the goalkeeper uh, told him there. But, yeah, no, we have more concerns up top. And, but also still problems with management. So it's we've already didn't we signed enough to fi- to fix the midfield or the the uh, um the defense. We need to get a proper CDM, and then we just need some type of miracle for the our attack because we keep saying every year we if we only had a true striker we need to buy a striker. We our attack needs a striker. We had Lukaku who apparently was a lot of people's preferred strikers. And he can't get the job done, which, by the way, I mean, it's a shame that what he had to go through um, during the, I think it was the Juventus game. But, um, and now we're going to get in Cuckoo um, coming from uh, coming from Germany. And he apparently, yes, yeah, it's, it's not like a true out, like nine striker. So now we still got to look in the market for that because if Nkuku and Joao are going to be playing around the same role, uh, it's just more of a headache because now it's like, well, then what's the point of having Kai here? What's the point of having Mao? And it's just, I don't know how many how many times we have to buy a striker and just keep looking for a new one every couple of years or every season because they're not good enough. Or they're not, it's it's just going to be a, a cycle. So that's why I like, I, I don't know who they're going to look for as a striker. Yeah, it is a tough one, my brother. But just quickly one, looking at the table right now, Obviously, Manchester United beat Everton 2 0. Also, Newcastle, a tough game, a tough win away to Brentford. Managed to win, massive three points for them. And as we mentioned already, we reviewed the Tottenham game. Somehow, Tottenham's still up there. And um, when you look at the Premier League this season, this is why it's the most competitive league, the best league in the world. Chelsea at the minute stands as 11, but. 39 points. I don't think Chelsea will have any troubles to probably finish around 8th to 10th place. But uh, just the regulation zone is just crazy, right? I I just don't think Chelsea, you know, like someone mentioned, let me try and bring it up in here, um, saying regulation seems possible for them, believe it or not. I just don't think that's going to... I just don't think they will get close today. What is your thoughts about Chelsea regulation? Come on, let's be honest and real in here. No, I'm not going to say they're going to get relegated, but I think what um, the guy is saying is that the threat is right there. That was never really an issue for like the typical top six teams. Now it's just like it's getting a little too close to like it's flirting with with relegation a little too much. But they should do enough to to what is it? Just to squeak by, and it sucks to admit that, but it's it's gonna be enough to. I, I won't be surprised if we go finish below eleven. It's it all depends. I mean, Wolves are uh, picking up some momentum now. Chelsea are going north. Uh, Villa is they're breaking away from us right now, and mm-hmm. uh, so and who's above us besides um uh, at the moment like at tenth and uh. Um, yeah, just bring it up. Is that is that is Wolves still an eight point gap? But above us, that's it's what it's Fulham and uh, Brentford. Fulham, Brentford. Let's okay. see. So, Villa is doing well. Villa is doing really, really well. Villa is breaking away. Wow, and it's you know it's the Una Emery effect, the good evening effect. It's 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 doing wonders over there, and they got a solid team too. And um, goal wise, you're gonna be in good hands with Andy Martinez. Yeah. So it's 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 good hopes for them, but yeah, I, I see what he's coming out with that um 
you know, it's wow. You guys look like you could be like being in a relegation fight, maybe. But it's I think we're just just too far apart right now. Like we we did enough just to get by. Like I said, like I said. Yeah, true. Um, let me just quickly go into. He's asking again. Chelsea next six games. I'm gonna bring up my brother. So Chelsea, let's forget about the Champions League. We're not able to be playing against Real Madrid. But so Chelsea in the Premier League next six games is Brighton at home, um, a home to Brentford, away to Arsenal, away to Bournemouth, and a home to Nottingham Forest. Right. Out of the six next games in the Premier League, that's one, two, three, four, five, six away to Chelsea. Let's go the last. Let, may as well go the last eight games because we don't know when that game against Man United is going to be played. So out of Chelsea, got eight games left in the Premier League. Um, that is home to Brighton, then away to Manchester United. I think, I think we're going to lose that one. Yeah, what can what games can you see Chelsea dropping points in here or like winning? Let's see. So winning is gonna be difficult, but I think we could pull points be, from Brentford. They've been looking like like they've been declining a lot lately. Bournemouth still a tough team because you see that uh, how they did with, versus Liverpool. You know, I would I would say Liverpool lost that one more than anything, but. Um, right now, if we can look this embarrassing to Wolves, I won't be surprised if Bournemouth do the same thing to us. Forest, um, I think they're, what they're managed by uh, Cooper, who is doing lots of kids above relegation too. They look yeah. like they're backing him at the fans. Um, I think that might be it. Brentford, Bournemouth, and Forest. Arsenal, I don't like. They're, they're going to try to, like I said, they're fighting for every every point they can to stay above City. City are trying to play catch up. Uh, Newcastle, when they play us, if they hadn't already solidified top four, then they're gonna do it that game. And that that's and Manchester United doesn't matter when it's gonna happen. That game is gonna be an L for Chelsea. Realistically, like at at Old Trafford, no, 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 no. It's is uh, if we pull out, if we pull out a minimum of six points, that'd be. I guess, like, going on par, nine out of all these would be okay. All right, so we, we did better than expected. Anything else would be a miracle. That's, a, that's more than nine points. Yeah. I mean, my um, man, as, yeah. um, as a neutral fan, I don't really have much hope on Chelsea last eight games, apart probably from the ones you've mentioned. But you never know. Let's not forget, teams like Forrest and Bournemouth will be fighting for their lives Arsenal City for the title, Newcastle to top four, Manchester United to the top four. So, I mean, Chelsea's in a big, big, you know, it's in a situation where, you know, you're most likely, and I've said this a few times for a few weeks now, that I don't think Chelsea will even play in any kind of European football next season, not even Europa League or Conference League. That may rule them will do them good with the long yeah. sport they have with all the players on loan. I think that will do Chelsea good. Not playing in European football next season. But what can you see Chelsea next season and like I mean my man, it's hard to actually talk about it's just been too messy. Club has been too messy. Since Ibramovic left, second to hall, spending so much money. You're just gonna have to rebuild. I know you're rebuilding, but He's just, he's going to take a few years. I do strongly believe he's going to take a few years for you to get up there again. Yeah, it's going to be, it's hard to, to say that this is going to be an easy, quick project to do. No, it's, I mean, you can argue that um, Putin, as soon as, as soon as he declared war on Ukraine, killed Chelsea because that took away Roman, that we had to start from square one. Um, granted, like, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, like my club, like, no, let's not pretend like what's going, what happened in Ukraine was, was, is, is worse. It clearly is worse, but it's, it really put us in a, a bad spot uh, where, yeah, we, we're rebuilding. We're trying to get a manager, right. We're trying to get a whole staff, right. Like it, it bully try to rebuild or, or uh, take down too much of whatever foundation was there to build his own. Then now we're, we're in the crisis zone right now for when it comes to this transition um but 
Uh, I'm I'm actually happy that it's that this team with with all the young players that they 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 signed are just gonna play Premier League and and Cup matches. I don't think we're gonna go and win Champions League. So anyone will say, but yeah, we can still get Champions League. We'll be back in there uh, next year. Do you really want to see this team? Like I I just don't know what else to to say about like to. I just we're okay, fine. All right, so anyone who says that Champions League is, is still possible to win, do you really see us beating Madrid after what they did at Barcelona at their home? Do you really and see us? Madrid, my boy, you know that Madrid in the Champions League, they always become a monster. Their mentality is on the is on that's their tournament. That's their tournament. They're the most, kings of the Champions League. Exactly. And then even if even if okay by some divine miracle we make it past Madrid penalties whatever it may be we have then had to be Bayern Munich run by guess who Tuchel or a Man City that is eager to win this for the first time because Pep might not win Premier League this year so he's gonna need something and then if that works a red hot Napoli. I think they dropped points over the weekend, or or not too long ago, um, last weekend. Last week, but, yeah, and it was a shock. But that team is scary. They are they are they are the, the the casuals' favorites. They're the if your team isn't in this tournament, that's your team to root for. Um, and it's gonna be a long a long road ahead. But if for whatever reason, whatever miracle that comes out to Frank Lampard of all people becomes the first English manager to win the Champions League and to take this side that looked like a relegation battle side to win the whole thing. I don't I I would have to go straight back to church and I have to go to Easter tomorrow to to re um to find God again. But uh it's but overall there's just it's just not much light at the end of this tunnel as I said. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna take a lot and anyone expecting like a quick turnaround just by one year, I, I'm gonna hate a break into you. But um, you know, you know speak- my boy, look, I I know so many Chelsea fans, right? I've, I'm I'm actually close to you know very good friends that support Chelsea. But it's so good to have someone like be able to talk like this about their club, knowing the club's been a mess. Their club's not good. They haven't been good enough this season and stuff. It's good. You know, I actually appreciate you coming along. It's actually good to hear from you. Basically, you're being a real fan. I call this kind of fans real people. It's the same as me. Look, yeah, I like to have a banter. People take the piss of me. I take the piss of them. But when it comes to the reality, you have to be real. You have to be real. And it's good to hear you, what you think about your club. And that's amazing. But quickly, one with Manchester City, because I know I'm in here. I'm listening to you. I'm enjoying listening to you, but I'm watching City at the same time, right? It's been yeah, 30, almost 35 minutes, right? Mm. Look how bad and how different is City with Halad and Julian Alvarez. And I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna say this again. Yes. I'm not gonna say this again because everyone's not gonna agree with me. Everyone's gonna say, "Ah, oh, for you don't know what you're saying," right? In 34 minutes, I've seen Southampton having three very good chances already to score. I've seen Halad losing balls. Halad cannot do anything, and he's a reality. I mean, he's just crazy, 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 crazy. Look, I mean, Holland is raw talent. I mean, the man is a scary alien giant up front that can score goals left and right. But for this City squad, it just seems that he holds the team back a little bit. And it's it, Julian Alvarez would have been the perfect replacement for what from Jay Seuss was or – what Sterling was, it's they play so much better with the that false nine type of um yeah, spot. So true. And uh, but yeah, I don't know. I I I made a ballsy statement of a prediction before the season started. I was like, um, I I believe that Alvarez will hit um twelve goals before before Holland does. That was dumb, but I was also um in my gambling mood. <laughs> um, but it's. It's it, you know what it's, it's surprising to see this. It's even Southampton look like they've been menacing and threatening up top. They just need to find that last touch. But watch City still winning somehow. They're gonna find like a a, a similar to the Crystal Palace game. 
Exactly. One nil at the end with a penalty. And uh, we've got my men back. I thought you go on holiday. You told me you're going no, to Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. Right. Let's just quickly talk because he really wants to talk about that. I want him to give his push quickly, like about Mac, uh, Mac Ellison, right, from Brighton. Because I've said, because I wanted mm. to, I want to cut this in a small clip, but I've said already, right? Looking, you know, Liverpool' biggest problem this season was their midfield, right? And uh, apparently, according to the Argentinian media, Liverpool is really interested in signing Mac Allison for next season, right? I think he is just the perfect footballer for that Liverpool midfield. As you guys will understand, what I'm trying to say is that he can play as a six, six and a half. As a number six, as a number seven and a half, as a number seven, as a number eight, as a number eight and a half, as a number ten, as a number nine and a half, he's an absolute brilliant player. And I think if Liverpool can pull this out, I think Liverpool's going to have a hell of a very good signing for next season. And Liverpool this season, Liverpool midfield this season has been has had more holes than you know any poor and stuff. I mean, it's just unreal. That midfield has been so bad. But, my man, what is your thoughts on seeing the media is interesting on I mean, I would happily take McAllister. I think McAllister is a very good footballer. He would fit our midfield. Um, and I don't see us on... I don't think we will sign him, but I hope we do. I think it, I think we'll probably go to City or probably... I think he might. I think it, because if, if we get financial backing, which I think reports are now saying we're going to get loads of money, um, I think we might. It's a difficult one. I mean, I think McAllister will leave Brian. I can confirm that. I think he might, but I don't know where. I think the fee they want sixty-one million. I would pay that if we have money for the other signings: Stu Bellingham, a centre back, right back potentially. But McAllister would. McAllister, Drew Belling and a midfielder, maybe a DM or Bicic. Oh, that would be that would cook. That would win the league. Because especially if we're gonna have one game a week potentially. I don't want Europe League Conference League. I would happily take ninth over fifth. Um, because I do not want Europe League Conference League. If we can get that we're gonna win the league. I think we're gonna win the league. If we get that midfield, McAllister, Jude, and maybe a DM, we're gonna win the league. Oh, Harlan? No. Yeah, um, but I think I think who we're gonna get? We're gonna get Mason Mount. I hope we don't. I beg L- Lampard, please convince Mount to sign a new contract. I do not want. I mean, Mount will be good signing, but decent money. I would not pay seventy million for Mount. We're getting a scam deal. Chelsea most, scam most, likely, most likely it'll be fifty to sixty, if anything. Yeah, anything I above that, it's like you're, it's having a lot. I would take fifty. I would, I don't mind paying fifty. Fifty is alright, considering how. Because he's actually good at Chelsea. I mean, I think he's been a bit overhated at Chelsea. I mean, because he... Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I think he's a very good player. I like Mount, but if you ask me to cut McAllister or Mount, I'm choosing McAllister. Okay. But I would not mind Mount for a decent price. So, like, ask one of those books. Look, I think my my ideal window would be... um, ideal window would be probably McAllister, Jude, and probably a DM and a centre-back and a right-back. But I think we're gonna sign. I think what we who what we're gonna do is do Bellingham, Mason Mount, probably Ndika from Frankfurt. That free agent, I'll take. Oh, him that'd the, be nice. The free agent, we need a centre back. I'll take Ndika on free, and maybe I think that's gonna be our window. I mean, it's a decent window. I don't think depends, right? I mean, look, I would take McAllister happily. I'll take Casado as well, but I, th- I don't think it will leave Brian. He's signing a new contract. Arsenal are the only team to get him if. If that was going to be a club, because Arsenal should have had him in January, um, but they won for Jorginho. But yeah, yeah, I would take McAllister happily. I don't care because if we get the financial backing, why not? Let's spend big for once. We've never spent big recently. If we spend big this summer, I think we will. Hopefully, we spend big. I think we will. So yeah, I think we should go all out this summer. We have to go all out. It's like the owners have a lot of people on their backs. So they need to spend the summer. And yeah, I think I said I don't blame Klopp mostly for this. I think. It's just the owner's not backing him. And look, let's hope the owner's back him this summer. So, yeah, I'm, I'll take McAllister, man. What a sign he would be if we get him. Yeah, I think, honestly, uh, jokes aside now, right, when I say about 
you know, that Liverpool midfield, you know, got more holes this season than a porn star, but he's mm. just a perfect. You see what he's done with Argentina in a World Cup. He was one of the best players in a World Cup. I mean, even Abrachin, he's also, he can take free kicks. He can take corners. The guy is so good. Like, uh, I think it would be amazing. Apparently, um, apparently you are linked to Ward Prowse. I was like, no. I do not want Ward Prowse. We already have a free kick team. Madison. If was, and yeah, if, if it wasn't for his free kicks, though, let's be honest, he wouldn't be getting the rounds he would. Okay? Like, he it's would true. not. That's like, fact. I, I do agree with you. Like, we already have Trent, who's a good enough free kick taker, and... He's Salah. one of the best free kickers in the world, but come on, as a like, footballer, I don't like, think we have he's enough free takers and we have enough free kick takers at the club. Um, Trent, like I said, Trent's a very good taker. Um, you got that's probably I'm gonna Salah. sign Trent to my YouTube channel next season. Oh my god, <laughs> I can't even dispute Trent right now because he's awful. I hope he uh pockets more in anything this Sunday. He probably won't. But... Awful, have you seen how awful it has been highlighted in this first half? Mm-hmm. Oh, Holland, um, shocking, and you know, no, City is playing bad because City look at what Jack Realison and Kevin De Bruyne trying to do, even good again. He should have a shot. All they're trying to do is cross the ball to Holland, he's yep. just crazy. He, he ruins City. Really I creativity. Think, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's why I think Bayern will knock him out of the Champions League. I just think they're gonna roll out on Holland too much and they're gonna get punished for it but because Bayern. Uh, they're a very quality side. What a quality side. And in the Champions League... They take their can't... chances because they create about 20 chances in every game. If they, if yeah. Bayern can take their chances, Bayern will damage City. I'm telling you. I would, I would love mm-hmm. it. Sadio Mane does that. Hopefully Sadio Mane scores against City. I'd love it because, you know, it's, he always scores against City. So, yeah. Oh, brilliant play from Southampton. Ooh. It'd be interesting, though. It'd be Mane and two goals. So, you got Liverpool and Chelsea united together to take down City. <laughs> oh, hopefully. <laughs> I said, if Man City got, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think Man City winning the Champions League this season. I just don't think they will. GPT, would you take um, Mac Mac oh. Allison at Chelsea? McAllister is an amazing player. Like, um, like uh, that would be an ideal midfield that you need. The only difference I, I would say is that um, instead of going for the likes of Jude and spending that type of money, I think you can make the same effect by getting uh, likes of uh, Declan Rice. No, um, but Mount Arthur, and and, and yeah. McAllister. But I love Jude too much. Like, I I don't know what it is. It's just Jude Bellingham. I just want him. The the next Gerard. I just I just want Jude Apparently Bellingham. He played well for Dortmund again today. And yeah, uh, I was watching a little bit. I mean, I, they apparently don't want. I mean, there are reports of 150 million, 130. I think we can get it for like 120, 130. Oh. 100 a good player too. Oh my god. Holland, oh 1-0. Holland has scored. Holland Yep. Because you are ahead of me. You see what he does? Yeah. And no, I, see... I, just, I just saw the, the attempt from Labia. And yeah. people Holland. tell me, and I swear, a lot of people will not be watching this game and telling me that Halad's score, he's better than Alvarez. He's been absolutely shocking and scored. But- like that's what top quality players do. I won't say shocking, shocking, but he doesn't yeah, they spit do. City as they well. They stay as quiet. Does. They don't have a good game, but they still score. That's what top quality players do, man. Yeah. But remember, yeah. before City score, Southampton could have score. Yeah, it was a good cross. Is that KDB? Right, oh. Poch, really appreciate all the love and support. Just before we go, I've got a question. As I put the pull up, right? Obviously, mm. Dalival, I'm not sure you probably was too young to remember. Mm. Um... Park Jin Jung for Manchester United, right? But no, I don't, I don't as Son, Son just become, you know, the first Asian player in the Premier League to score 100 goals. He's, who is, for you guys, right? Because I had this question up, right? Who is the greatest ever Asian player to play in the Premier League? Oh, we are checking, guys. Between, we are checking. Between are checking. Son or... Park Jin Jung. I know GPT I, remembers, but who I you would some you part. guys say? <laughs> I, I, I think I was the only one that picked you some Park. I, I just remember that man at Manchester United was unreal. And Ferguson praised him as one of his favorite players because yeah. whatever he would ask of him to do, he would get the job done. 
And um, but yeah, it's just Jesus. I mean, um, Son is just yeah the goal scoring machine. But yeah, that he I just think he's just been very inconsistent. At Jason Porter, I don't think he had the inconsistency issue. Um, but I'm not. I didn't watch Manchester United matches frequently enough to give that a fair assumption. But I'm sure the the guy in the chat would would uh, confirm that. I'm not sure if he's old old enough to remember, but um, oh. like I've watched, you know, like I think Park Jin Jun was an absolutely amazing footballer with mm. an unbelievable war cry. When you look, if I have to pick the greatest Asian footballer that I ever played in the Premier League between Son or Park Jin Jun, I would have to go with Park Jin Jun just because of. How good he was on Manchester United. His work rate was unreal. Son is a quality player. Don't get me wrong. He's doing amazing for Tottenham in the Premier League. But if I have to pick one, I would say Park Jin Jun. In my team, yeah, I would pick Park Jin Jun. Half time, by the way. It's half time, by the way, for Manchester. It's yeah, half time. Yes. Wait, he, was, uh, he was special. But yeah, I absolutely agree with you guys. Spot on, boys. Look, really appreciate the love and support. Really enjoy. I don't know for some reason why this stream did not have many people watch. Usually it's about, you know, 100 people, 10,000 views and stuff. But look, it's where it is. Everyone, it's Saturday. It's nice weather as well. It's nice weather in the UK. Everyone is out probably drinking and like in a park because it has to be nice, the weather. I'm not going to say nice, nice. Cause for me to be nice weather, it has to be. 30 degrees all over. But, um, it's actually been nice yesterday and today. Like I was at work this morning, it was nice. But look, people, much love to you all. Really appreciate you guys. It's been amazing. And for the very first time, I had GPT on my channel. Very good football knowledge. My man, you know what you're talking about. You've got very good ball knowledge. You've been watching football for so long. You know, I thought you was younger, but yeah, you're pretty much the same age as me. But I'm not telling anyone's my age because everyone always asks me, what is my age? But yes, we will be back tomorrow, my man, right? Just quickly, one predictions. I want to hear GPT tomorrow, Liverpool or Arsenal predictions, right? I know we cannot predict because anything can happen in football is a funny game. So, but just quickly, one. Me? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh. ahead. You go first. Oh, you, you go first this time. Just... Yeah, you're the Liverpool fan. Go ahead. Okay, fine. Three no Arsenal. Wow. Man, are I'll, you I'll... saying three no Arsenal for real? Or are you just joking? Yeah, real. Three nil Arsenal. Arsenal's not going to beat Liverpool three nil. By the way, yeah. is that your predictions? Do you know honest. what he's saying three nil because he's a Liverpool fan. If Liverpool wins, he's happy, you know, over the moon. Then if Liverpool gets beat by 3-0, he's going to say, I did say, I did say Liverpool was going to lose 3-0. I'll be honest, okay. 2-1 Arsenal. I know, you said that last stream. But, GPT, predictions for tomorrow. As much as I would I would imagine Liverpool pulling what they did to um, Manchester United, uh, I don't think it's going to be the same thing. Um, I, I yes. think Arsenal will break their streak. Of losing to Anfield, which I think has been since 2012. Yeah, and they win, they win 3 1. It's going to be first, I think Mo Salah is going to score a goal, and then they're just going to capitulate like it was um, versus City. Yeah, all right, my boy. Uh, my predictions is Liverpool to win. It's hard to predict the correct score. But I'm sure I am very confident Liverpool's going to turn up until tomorrow and Liverpool's going to beat Arsenal. Can you expect us to beat Arsenal, who have a midfield of Carter? You guys are crazy at home. And our midfield... Doesn't to matter. Be. You don't need midfield. You only need Salah to turn up. He's been slipping this season. Baron Nunes is with respect me, senior bank. Ah, Liverpool's going to beat Arsenal tomorrow and I'm going to take the piece. I'm going to have a big stream tomorrow and I'm going to take the piece of all the Arsenal fans, right? Like <laughs> I said, not... yeah, Arsenal was a club I never mind, right? I didn't care about him, right? But this season, Arsenal fans has really annoyed me. They yeah. have really got into me and I don't like the way they act in like and after you know, 19 years. They were sleeping on their beds and after 19 mm -hmm. years, they think they're the biggest club in the world. You know what? Like, this is 20 you know years of frustration more, coming out. You know what makes you more laugh? Like, you know, they were comparing Saka, Jesus to Mane to Messi. It's like, you're not that great yet. Hey, Saka's looking back. Saka's world class. I think he's not there yet, but he's he's, Mane, I think they're good. I think they're quality players. 
they're not that level yet. Calm down. Oh, my goodness. Your first potential league title in um, 19 years. Calm down. Okay, Arsenal fans. You think Arteta is better than Klopp as well? Just because he has the same amount of Premier Leagues. No. So, yeah, these Arsenal fans just annoy me. I hope they don't win the league. If we beat them tomorrow, I'm coming for you, Arsenal fans. That's what I'm saying to you. I, even though we're losing, I don't know if we're going to look. We're going to lose. I think we're going to lose. Um, tomorrow's going to be a big stream. I'm pretty sure it will. And I just hope that tomorrow is not another sunny day in UK so everyone stays indoors and they come and watch guys. And um, like I said, GPT, a massive thank you to you. It was a pleasure to have you, my boy. Really enjoy. Like I said, you got very good football knowledge. We've been live for about an hour and a half watching boring City with Harlad, but never mind. Um, yeah, the main focus on this stream was the Tottenham game against Brighton. Shame, embarrassing. The refs really, really helped Tottenham get another win. But look, um, you guys are more than welcome. I know that Laval will be with me tomorrow unless he gets stuck in Barcelona on holiday. He's going overnight. <laughs> and um, Jip, GPT, my boy, Really, really enjoy your ball knowledge. If you free tomorrow, you want to come along, we're going to have a laugh. Also, I'm going to have Maisie. Maisie's... Um, oh, Maisie. Jupiter Maisie. not who's Maisie. Uh, uh, from the Maisie. Devil... Red Devil channel. Maisie. Yeah. Yeah, she's good people, yeah. man. She's, You're not she's, Maisie, uh, yeah. I, I yeah. knew you, you knew Maisie. She will come along, right? She hasn't been on my live streams yet, and she will come along. So hopefully we have a big stream tomorrow. Like you know, we can discuss a lot of things because it's a it's a massive game tomorrow. It's a massive game tomorrow. We're probably gonna say that's it. Finish is over. I've said this already. I said Liverpool top four. That's it. It's over. Liverpool will after the their draw to Chelsea, and uh, but tomorrow clearly we're gonna have a better view. And also um, with Arsenal title tomorrow. If Arsenal lose tomorrow, is City beat Southampton today? I think like I'm not changing. I predict City to win. I say I still think City. I still going to predict City to win, but the sign saying Arsenal is going to win. But look, um, like I said, let's see tomorrow. Hopefully for a big streamer, man. Is there anything you want to say before we go? Um, just you know, thank you for having me on here. It was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, you know, um, you, you did mention one thing is that like um, uh, I do talk unbiasedly. That's that's just how I talk. If, I'll just be honest. If I if I can't be anything else. Um, but yeah, I would I would try to come on tomorrow. I do work, uh, but if anything, I'll be in the chat. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I definitely um, it was a lot of fun. And you know, again, thank you for having me on, bro. No problem, man. You're always welcome. Really appreciate. It. I I have to be the one to thank you, and like everyone, I I feel like I'm a lucky man. I always get a lot of love and support, and I really appreciate. It. I cannot thank people enough for all the love and support I get. Since the day one, I opened my channel. I still have the world, you know, a few up there taking the piece the way I speak. But unfortunately, is my accent right? Some people find it sexy. Some people don't like it. It's what it is. <laughs> but look, we cannot all like the same person. We cannot all like the same woman because otherwise, what would it happen? We cannot all support the same football club because if we all support the same football club, football wouldn't exist. That's a reality. But Look, he's worried, my man. Now, big thank you. God bless you. And I will see you very soon. Thank you to everyone. Really appreciate all the love and support. There's no more streams for me today. I need a rest. Go work tomorrow as well. But big one tomorrow. Liverpool 4, Arsenal 1. I'll see you guys very soon. Merci, muchas gracias. Adios. And remember always, vamos.